Today's episode is brought to you by Square Cash. Square Cash is the best way to pay people back. You can pay your friends back, your family, your coworkers, lizards, anyone. If if a lizard has Square Cash, you can do that. Um, you can sp- you could pay the lizard back. Sending and receiving money is totally free and fast, and most fast and most payments they uh, they can be deposited directly in your bank account in seconds. That's seconds. So download the free Square Cash app for iOS or Android. Pronto. Do it now. In fact. <clears throat> <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the 20th podcast, the 20th episode of Congratulations, the podcast. Uh, never thought we'd make it to 20, but that's a lie. I kind of actually thought maybe we'd make it to 20, but nonetheless, here's 20. And, um, you know, today I, I got to tell you, I woke up a little under the weather and um, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel very good at all. Uh, I was supposed to go to an appointment and I had to cancel it. And I, 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 I did, I canceled the appointment and my agents and my managers were angry with me. Um, but I didn't do it. I said, I can't do it. I'm bedridden, but I'm here still recording the podcast for you, my babies. Cause 20 can't wait. The 20th episode can't wait. Um, let's do this before we start. This is something I haven't done, um, in the podcast yet. I always wait till the end to plug my tour dates, but why don't I do it now? Because I feel like maybe some of you guys turn the shit off, and that's not fair. Now, I know life is not fair, but I'm trying to fucking game the system here. Baltimore, Maryland, June 15th, first show sold out. Second show, I think that there's a little bit of tickets left. Atlantic City, that's sold out, I think. June 17th, Huntington, New York. West Palm Beach, Florida. I'm there the whole weekend, June 22nd. Austin, Texas coming up, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Montreal, Montreal, that's how they say it, Montreal, Nashville, Tennessee, Salt Lake City, Phoenix, Arizona, Tempe, Spokane, Charlotte, and Irvine. Those are all the dates. And I rescheduled my Australia date to be in October. Uh, That and, and Man on Fire, the Netflix special that I did, is coming out in two weeks on the 27th of June. So put that in your queue. Now, here's the deal. Everyone's going to say, hey, why don't you come, like, I'm going to do West Palm Beach, and I'm going to do the show, the show is I'm going to fly home, and Monday, there's going to be a comment on either Twitter or Instagram saying, please come to South Florida. How come you never come to South Florida? Now, that's when I'm going to get blood mad, blood red mad. I'm going to get BRM. I'm going to get blood red mad because I was just there. And see, that's the kind of thing that's going to make me blood red mad. Because just do, do a little bit of research. You like a guy, you want to see him? Don't be mad he's never coming to the city when he's literally in your goddamn city. Do you know what I'm saying? Now, I know that's not just me. I know it happens all the time to different band members and comedians alike. But uh, it also kills me when somebody tweets you or somebody like, hey, when are you coming to Albuquerque, New Mexico? When you can literally just type that into Google and the first thing that will pop up is when that artist is in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I guess people want to feel connected. I don't know. I just don't. No, I just don't know. Uh, So yeah, I woke up a little under the weather. I don't think I sound too bad, though. Sometimes you wake up and you sound awful. Um, And uh, I woke up to I woke up real late because I was trying to sleep it off. But um, woke up to about 175 texts. Hey, how about when you wake up to 175 texts and you think that everybody's dead in the world? And then you check your text and it's really just two group messages just talking about fucking one of your friends, you know, um, I wake up and I look at the, I wake up and I look at the text messages. Oh, 175 texts. Who's dead? No, nobody. Just Jim made a mistake, made a typo. And then everyone's razzing him because of the typo. Right. Mm. I had a, uh, a show at the comedy store, uh, maybe Friday and the crowd was not good. Um, now it was fine. It was just annoying. Uh, they were like, they laughed like, ha, 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 ha. and then that's it. 
usually the comedy store's off the hook. And everybody was doing was having this kind of a set. Nobody was bombing, but it was just not raucous how it usually is. And I wrote on Facebook or Twitter, both of them, about how shitty the crowd was. And then I forgot that when you do that, then everyone is going to text you that, you know, hey, what happened? And nothing happened. And it was just annoying. And I felt like one of those fucking idiots that just was complaining on Facebook that shouldn't have been. Um, But yeah, I don't really use Facebook all that much at all, actually. Uh, so that's something that's really interesting to tell you guys because that's not boring at all. Because it's so not boring for me to say, hey, I don't use Facebook that much. So good job that I did that. Good job that I mentioned that right now. So you guys definitely were like, oh, cool. That's really fucking interesting. Um, but I've been hanging out uh, in L.A. It's been two weeks, and I'm going to um, Baltimore in a few days. Uh, never been there. I'm playing the markets that I haven't played yet. But I'm going to take the wire tour. I feel like there should be... Every time I mention Baltimore to somebody, they'll let people go, ah, The Wire, though, huh? Like, that's their claim to fame. They should have a bus. They should have a bus tour to be like, this is Trayvon Barksdale's. Um, this was his stoop. And this is where that f- gunfight happened. And there you go. That's what's going on in Baltimore. Um, I don't really know what Baltimore is. I don't know, really know what Baltimore has to offer. Um I'm going there for two night or one night, um, but that's it, and I'm going to do my show. I haven't done an hour in a long time, probably since, I don't know, f- fuck, man, over two months, probably, so I got to get together, I got to get it together, but, so I've been in LA, and I go to this coffee bean, and I know that some of you guys know this, I know I talked about how the coffee bean I used to run, and then I had to move. I fucking ran the whole block, and then I had to move. And I don't run the block anymore on this Hollywood coffee bean. But there's so many crazies at this coffee bean, dude. And some of the crazies are cool, and some of the crazies are not cool. Some of them you're like, you know, you don't really want to talk to all of them. But it's right smack dab in the middle of fucking Hollywood. And there's one guy that's super annoying, but he's nice, so whatever. He's got a dog that smells like shit, and he smells like shit too, and he's always wanting to fucking talk. And I don't want to. And sometimes he's like, hey, man, can I bother you? And I just, I'm like, hey, man, you know, yeah. it's like, I'm just chilling, dude. What, what's up? And he's like, oh, you think I'm annoying, huh? And I'm like, I mean, you know you are, you know? And he's like, oh, yeah. That's the kind of relationship we have, you know? Full head of hair. Um, like, like, literally, like, looks like a Marvel villain. Like, that's his gray, full head of gray hair. And his dog looks just like him. And he's like, hey, can I do my chicken dance for you? And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, nah, but also, yeah, though, you know, because what the fuck is this going to look like, the chicken dance? So I said, yeah, as I said, yeah, um, he starts doing the chicken dance already, like anticipated my yeah, and was doing, this is the chicken dance, book, 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 and was doing the chicken ban- dance, by the way, holding his dog on his leash. And the dog was like, well, come on, buddy, what are you doing? Just let me, how about that? How about the fact that it, being a dog and then if you have a, an owner, you don't get to pick the owner. How fucked up is that? And I know a dog's life is a dog's life and they don't really care who they're with. But dude, imagine if you were owned by a fucking guy who does the chicken dance at a coffee shop all the time. Imagine that's your owner. A guy that's a lunatic. He says, hey, record this chicken dance. And I record it. And then he says, you're going to post that? It'll go viral. And I say, no, nah, I don't think so, man. I might upload it now that I talked about it on the on the podcast. But that's that's your owner, dude. Like, if it's your, if you're a kid and that's your parent, you can, lead, you can be like, all right. Even as a 15-year-old, you can run away. You're crafty enough, you figure it out. But this dog is on a leash. The dog's with this motherfucker. He has to wait till like the guy goes to sleep with the door open and then run away. But the dog doesn't even know any better. The dog will probably just chill. The dog doesn't even know that the owner is so fucked up. Right? Imagine being a pet fucking tarantula in a cage and your owner is just like some lunatic that keeps shit in a jar on his fucking desk. Right? You're a fuck. You're, you're fucked. You're a tarantula and you're fucked. Not only are you in a cage somewhere in Monrovia... But Yoner has fucking shit in a jar on his desk. That's that's something that's out there. 
you can there's so many people out there there's definitely a guy who owns a tarantula that keeps it in a case and he also keeps his shit in a jar on his fucking desk and that tarantula can't do shit about it feel bad for the fucking tarantulas and dogs you know what i mean so anyway, this guy's fucking crazy. He's definitely not the only crazy person that's at this coffee bean. There's so many fucking crazy persons that's at this, at this coffee bean. There's this other guy that has glitter on his face all the time and open and has a, a button-down shirt, and he fucking opens. It's open always. He looks like Billy Idol if Billy Idol was on, you know, meth and had been on meth for like three weeks and is like, I got to get off it eventually, but... I'm going to ride this out for a little bit longer. Like he still looks a little healthy, but like knows what he's doing. But like also he's got glitter all over his face and eyeliner and looks like he's, he doesn't know what is in store for him, even though he thinks he's got it under control. Real tight pants, a little bit fashionable, 60 years old, but insane. However, insane. And I know he's insane because sometimes he has a guitar there and he's like, can I play a song for you? And I just say, nah, not really, man. I don't really, I don't like when sane people play me a fucking music, right? So, but he's always like kind of friendly, but you could tell like a trigger, like something could fucking set him off immediately. So I'm, I'm, I get a, a coffee, I walk outside and as I'm walking outside, I hear him saying, he's talking to this girl and I hear him look at me and say, yeah, that's right, man. Keep walking, keep walking to me. Now I'm like, if this guy wasn't crazy, I would have said, what's up? Is everything cool? Like, did I do something wrong? Like, I'm sorry. Did you, did I offend you or what, you know? Do you think I'm someone I'm not? But, however, his brain is broken. So I'm not going to, like, try and, like, use logic with him. So I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to let him have that shit. Because he's an insane person. Because he is at a cafe with his shirt completely unbuttoned. Because his glitter all over his face. And you can't reason with somebody who has glitter all over their face. Don't give a fuck who they are. So... I just let it go and I sit down and uh, I'm having a coffee, hanging out. I'm about to go do my shows, just chilling, keeping it totally real, just fucking relaxing. The guy comes up to me and I'm like, here we fucking go, motherfuckers. And he says, hey, man, can I ask you a favor? And in my head, I think no. But with my voice, I say, sure. And he says, uh, um, can I? Uh, I need to help, like, I need to find a van. That's what he says. He needs to find a van. Now, I don't know what he means. Like, I don't know if he means that there's a van out there that he lost, that he needs to find a specific van, or if he needs money for a van, or if he's just fucking saying bullshit because he's got glitter all over his face. So I'm like, uh, you need a van, huh? Uh, he says, yeah, or like some kind of like a Winnebago or some kind of a thing to store. I, for I stopped listening after that. And then I says... I say, well, man, look, I, I think I'm really the wrong guy to help you find a van. I don't know where vans are, and I don't know what you mean. And he says, well, I think I know how you can help me. So instead of keeping on this, having this conversation, I just say to him, and I say, look, man, I'm not going to help you. I don't want to. And he says, well, why didn't you just say that then? And I'm like, so I say to him, well, there you have it, man. You know? There you go. It took a few steps, but I just said it. And he says, well, all right, man. And he walks away, like huffing and puffing. And I'm like, I don't fucking, this guy, be, he's mad at me for, be, he, this guy fucked everything up. And now he's mad at me for the way I dealt with it. I didn't do shit. I'm sitting here. I got my shirt on. At least it's not open all the way. So he leaves and then he fucking pivots and walks back and he says, hey, man, is that your car out there? And he points to my car. And I'm like, for fuck's sake, now I got to tell this guy where my car is. And I know he knows it's my car because he saw me get out of it. So I was like, yeah, that's my car, man. And he says, is it true those windows are really expensive? And the, it'd be a shame if something happened to those windows. And I'm like, it took me like 0. 0.2 seconds to realize that this dude is saying he's going to break my fucking windows. So with a booming voice with like my fucking baritone shit, I, f I activate it and I say, hey, motherfucker, are you threatening me? Like that. Like a fucking, like, like I, like I'm ready for action. And he says, well, no, man, of course I'm not threatening you. I just heard that those windows are expensive, but I'm not threatening you, threatening you. And I said, good motherfucker. Like that, like some crazy, like now I'm the crazy fucking guy. And now the manager's out there and he screams at this dude. And he's like, motherfucker, I told you not to fucking harass the customers. Get the fuck out of here. And then the dude is like, 
No, no, no. I'm not trying to threaten. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I just, will you please mail my videotapes or mail my, my tapes? And the manager's like, look, man, I'll mail your tapes, but I just, you can't be harassing the fucking customers. I told you not to get the fuck out of here. He's like, okay, okay, okay. And I'm like, what the fuck? This guy's trying to mail video. I don't know what's happening, dude. I feel like I'm in a fucking Fellini movie. I don't know what's happening, but I almost got into a fight with a fucking Billy Idol on meth. And I'm just trying to run this fucking coffee bean and drink the caffeine before I get to the comedy store and bullshit with this fucking terrible audience. I mean, I don't know what the fuck's going on at this place. It's like between him and the chicken dance guy. It's like with the smelly dog. I'm like, why? what is it about? There's always fucking crazy people at coffee shops. I feel like it's like because it's like not that expensive and they don't like crazy people don't have money because they're fucking insane. If they had a lot of money, they'd buy shit like fucking, you know, stuffed animals and plants. And they just spe- so they don't have money because even if they had money, they'd spend it on insane shit. Um, uh, like glitter, right? Um, or chicken dance lessons. Uh, so like, but, and I told the manager, I was like, yo man, I was like, I like coming to this fucking place, but yo, it's like a few too many flew over the fucking cuckoo's nest in this bitch. And he's like, dude, I know I try to be nice, but it's like, it's really hard to, you know, it's like a legal gray area where they're, if they're not bugging anybody. If they're not doing anything like illegal, then we got to let them hang. And I'm like, yeah, man, but I mean, dude. And, and then, and then I told the guy, the chicken dance guy, what happened with that guy. And he's, and he says to me, oh, that guy's crazy. I'm, I mean, how crazy do you have to be if a crazy person thinks you're crazy? Oh, the guy who wanted me to record the chicken, him doing the chicken dance on my phone for me to keep, told me that another guy with glitter on his face was crazy. What the fuck's happening to this world? It's actually kind of sad, now that I think about it. But there's all sorts of crazy motherfuckers there. Like some lady came up to me that looked like the fucking lady on the... on the um, um, She's there all the time. She's wearing a, She only wears a robe. She wears a robe. She wears a robe to this place, to the coffee bean. And she fucking looks like the woman on the card on the on the home on the cards that you get at Hallmark. The 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 lady with the sunglasses and the you know what I'm talking. You know who I'm talking about? I feel like her name's May or some shit. And the card, it's like a style of card with old, and she's always on it. And she's like some bitter old lady. That's what she, this lady looks like. And I was just sitting at a fucking table at the fucking coffee bean, and she comes up and she's like, "This is a handicap table. Can I sit here instead of you?" And I'm like. It's not a handicap table. It's just a fucking table. But of course, I was like, oh, sure. I didn't know. And I left, you know. <laughs> it's amazing. Like, I go there, but like, these crazy people affect my mood, my overall mood. I'm driving to the comedy store like this motherfucker. Almost got in a fight with Billy Idol on meth. I mean, we're all fucking kind of crazy, but like, this, these guys, broken. I don't know. At what point do you cross the fucking eccentric line into, oh, that guy's got a real problem? Whatever, dude. I guess maybe, you know. I'm, I've been in, you know what's made me in a fucking good mood f- like all week? I got these fucking unreal pants, man. Like, I got these fucking unreal pants, dude. And I'm. this isn't a, an, an ad, by the way. As a matter of fact, I'm not even going to tell you the fucking um, brand or whatever. But I walked into this store and I got these one pair of pants, man. And they're jogger, they're jog jeans, bro. They're fucking so ill, man. They fucking stretch out around the cock area and like the fucking, they have no belt loop, but they have the, the tie. And then they have, get skinny at the bottom and you can wear them, you could sag them a little bit. And it looks like, you know, you got a diaper on, but also you're kind of feeling it. Like people look at you and they're like, that guy knows what's up. These pants are so unreal, bro. And I got two of them. And I wish I got... They were all spaced out around the table. I wish I got all... They were like 10 or 11 pair of different colors. I wish I got all the shades. But I got... Dude, I got like acid wash ones, like a dipshit. And then I also got white ones, like an even bigger dipshit. And I wore them. Dude, and I wore them. How about when you wear white pants? That's basically like saying, hey, I'm going to wash these. I'm going to wash these. You know I'm going to wash these later tonight. Like, 
you fucking walk into you sit down and you there, there's always shit on chairs and tables you, you fucking I got out of my car and the ankle hit the fucking bottom of the car pants over pants over that's it washing machine here I come got out of the car with white pants hey have you got out of the car hey did you get out of the car with white pants on washing machine here here I come did you go outside washing machine here I come if you wear white pants you got a death wish man we got a wash wish. I mean, let's not say you want to kill yourself. But girls wear white pants all the time. What do they do? One time I was, and this is, I'm not even trying to be gross. I was at the library when I was in high school and a teacher was wearing white pants and she was leaning over um, uh, the the counter and she had like, this is gr- gross. I don't mean to be gross, but she, she, had, she had gotten her period and it was all over her white pants, man. And she didn't know. And I saw a student walk up and be like, excuse me, Mrs. Yada Yada. And then she was like, and then she went to the bathroom. She had white pants on. Hey, don't wear white pants when you're going to maybe get your period. I mean, that's just uh, begging for. But anyway, I wear these pants and I got this Irish friend named Mark. And he just says, on real pants. On real pants. I know I, I can't really do the, the accent. It kind of sounds Indian when I do it. But Oh, those pants are unreal. Unreal pants. And I'm like, thanks, bro. And I just got, I, you know. So now our word of the moment is unreal. That's all we say. Like, my fucking chest feels unreal. I just worked it out. And we laugh. We laugh like a bunch of fucking idiots. But these pants, dude, forget it. It's on. You know when you put on certain pants and you're like, it's on. If any action goes down, everybody's getting kicked. If anybody talks shit, I'll do a high kick. I'll hit their fucking medulla oblongata. I'll fucking hit, take my heel to their medulla oblongata. And knock them out. Make them feel sense, senseless. Did you want to feel senseless? Talk shit to me while I'm wearing unreal pants. That's what I'm fucking saying. Uh, whatever you guys don't know you don't know what i'm saying half of you guys are probably like what the fuck are you talking about but the, those of you that truly know what i'm talking about real babies this is my cult get in on it get in on it um get the fuck in on it oh man the chicken dance dude imagine if the guy did the chicken dance in unreal pants i probably would have posted it to be totally honest Have you guys tried Lyft? If you're choosing a ride-sharing company to drive for, go with the company that treats you better. Lyft. That's Lyft. Lyft offers in-app tipping. Only Lyft. When you drive for Lyft, you keep 100% of the tips. Drivers have been paid over 150 million tips since the feature was introduced. $150 million in tips? Hey, that's a lot of money. It's almost too much. So sign up with them. Express Pay lets drivers get paid almost instantly instead of waiting for weeks. Lyft has even taken the guesswork out of pickups. The new AMP device, AMP device, uses color coding to help passengers find their drivers. You can earn hundreds of dollars a week plus tips. That's a lot of money. You want to make more money? Drive more. It's never been easier to give yourself a raise. Just give yourself a raise. Get in the car. You want to make more money? Open the car door. Is it that simple? It's that simp. Go to lift.com slash congrats today and you can get a $500 new driver bonus. That's lift.com slash congrats. Lift.com slash congrats. Limited time only. Terms apply. And wear your pants when you do it. Get on real pants. Fucking, you know what I mean? And that's the shit. Uh... You know, it's funny how, like, things... I always think about this when I was a kid. Like, toys made you happy, you know? Like a fire truck, a little fire truck. And then when you'd get clothes for your birthdays, you'd be like, ah, a shirt? Tommy sucks. Tommy got me a shirt that his mom picked out. I wanted a fucking Ninja Turtle, right? And then later on, like, you, you just change completely. Like, if somebody bought me a Ninja Turtle now, I'd be like, hey, man, you craze? You can go to Coffee Bean with your shirt open and glitter on your face. But now I want pants and I want shirts. 
because I want to look fly as shit. Extra paper, scoop that up, dude. One one LL Cool J lyric where he starts in the song and he goes like this. Yeah, fresh off the private jet to Europe. Extra paper, scoop that up. Held for 14 minutes. Extra paper, scooped that up. My favorite, dude. Extra paper? Like, like it was a question. Extra paper? Hey, scooped that up. Scooped. Like on, I imagine him leaning out of the plane and just as it fucking touches down, putting his arm down and scooping it up like Arnold Schwarzenegger when he fucking tilts the car in Last Action Hero and, the di- and catches the dynamite and then throws it out of the car. Extra dynamite? Scoop. Extra dynamite? Scoop that up. Yeah. Worst Arnold Schwarzenegger impression of all time. Um, extra paper? Scoop that up. Eh, Sakak. Ella Cool J's the shit, though. He really is. When I did Lip Sync Battle, he was so fucking funny. He was like Mr. Showman. And he was like so dope. And he was like, man, you hilarious, dog. Ha <laughs> ha. And then during the commercial break, one time he was like, yo, let's just get this over with. But like still, <laughs> but like still doing it like in his like showmanship thing. He was like, you know what I'm saying? Let's get, let's get home. No, ha <laughs> ha. It was so funny. And I laughed so hard. He was like, you know what I mean? though, right. And I was like, yup. Then sang Demi Lovato. Well, didn't sing shit actually. Um, <laughs> oh man, dude. Hello, Cool J is what looks better than me. And he's 90. No, how old is he for real? He's like 40 something. He's got to be almost 50. Guy's been around forever. And he looks way better than me. Extra chicks could scoop that up. And me look like, as Brian Callen says, an Albanian sex trafficker. Um, yeah, I, I do though. I look like a fucking, I look like, I look like a creepy dad. Somebody said I was, the, my buddy, my opener said like, you're, you're like the dad of our group. And that fucking is not, that didn't, I'm like, is that cool? Am I, is that sexy that I'm the dad? Like, it's kind of cool if girls are like, Hey daddy. But like, if your fucking friend says you're like the dad of the group instantly dried up all the pussy made boners go down. You know, for the gays or whatever. I want gays to think I'm fucking sexy, though. Some guys are homophobic about that shit. And they're like, nah, bro, that ain't cool. Fuck that, man. One time, uh, uh, a guy, I don't know if he was gay or not. I assume he was, but he came up to me and he was like, just so you know, the gay community loves you. And I was like, fuck, man, that shit made my whole week. It it made me feel like, uh, it made me feel accepted, you know? It was very cool. I liked it. It was nice for him to say that, too. It was, like, one of the nicest compliments I ever got. Um, you know, not that there's, like, a whole fucking meeting on it. Like, hey, guys, we're here. How, what do we think about Chris D'Elia? We just came to a party. Oh, we like him. Oh, cool. Surf punch. Buggy nights. We don't know. We just came to a party. What do we feel about Chris D'Elia as a whole? We support him. Tell him. Go ahead. Go ahead, Rick. Go to his show and tell him. Um, but yeah, it made me feel good. It made me feel accepted. Everybody wants to feel accepted, right? Why does everybody want to feel accepted? Dude, when I was in Toronto for five weeks, I was alone-ish, you know? I didn't, like, everyone else was working when I wasn't working, and then I, I didn't really have many friends there. I had one buddy, but besides him... I felt lonely and I started thinking about when guys are in prison and then they got to go to the hole. They're not accepted. They're fucking in the hole. Dude, that I literally felt like my brain was turning to mush because I wasn't hanging out with enough people. Dude, imagine if you were alone on an island, not accepted by anything but sand and twigs. Yeah, that's that that just would rock my world, man. I used to think like fuck that it would be cool. Like, to be, literally, I used to be like, dude, if you were alone on an island, it'd be sad, but, like, I would just be fucking, I'd be an animal, man. I'd hunt animals, fuck trees, you know what I mean? Like, I'd find, like, the appeal in, like, beautiful trees and just carve a hole out and just fuck them. And, like, then while I, when I'm done fucking a tree, I'd just run over to a boar and just attack it. And maybe it would get the best of me, but maybe not, though. It would, you know, maybe it wouldn't. Maybe I would 
rear naked choke hold the fucking boar and then just fire it up and eat it and eat some and then fuck a tree and go to bed. You know? Probably lonely though, fucking trees and eating boar. But then when I went to Toronto, I was like, man, I, I only have one friend here. I don't think I would, I think I would fucking just let the boar eat me now that I really feel, now that I really, um, you know, really now I really know what it feels like. <laughs> oh, fuck. It's so goddamn hot in this room and I'm wearing a sweater and I knew, you know, when you fucking do that shit, when you're like, should I wear a sweater or not? And you're like, it's cold out, but I'm going to be inside most of the time. And then you, but the sweater looks like bomb, like you look like ill as shit. And you're like, this is my outfit, though. And then you're out, and then your armpits start sweating. You're like, I knew I should have picked a different outfit because I don't look trill if I take the fucking sweater off and just wear the undershirt. The undershirt isn't what's trill. The sweater is what's trill, right? So I'm not that I need to look trill. This is an audio podcast, but, like, I, you know, I like the sweater. But, like, man, I got to wash this undershirt now. But, you know, it's like life and times, man. Trials and tribulations. Speaking of unreal pants, have you guys uh, <clears throat> heard of this company, 5.4? Uh, it's a great company for clothing, and uh, it, it doesn't cost a fortune. 5.4 Club is revolutionizing the way men shop, and it's true, too. Each month, they send you a curated box of two to three items that they are handpicked to match the current season and your style. They've been helping men with fashion for over 15 years and shipped to over 100,000 men every month. They know what they're doing. So if you don't, you know, that's fine because they're doing it. And they sent me a bunch of stuff that I actually love and one of the one or two of the shirts are unbelievable and I wear I've wore them like days in a row to where people are like, "Yo, bro, you know, do you wash that shirt because it's great." Um, so whatever, when you look good, you feel good. So so do that. You get $120 worth of clothes for just $60 a month. And you can pause or cancel any time and uh as a member, oh, here's another thing. As a 5-4 club member, you also receive up to 50% off items in their online shop and access to ex exclusive members-only items, free shipping, and size exchanges. Uh, Chris Paul and Mark Wahlberg use 5-4 club, and they're very cool. You don't like them, you're probably a plant. 5-4 um, is featured in GQ, Vice, and in Style. I mean, it's just great. Go to 54club.com right now and enter promo code congrats, and they'll give you 50% off your first month's package plus a free pair of sunglasses. That's 50% off your first package at 54club, spelled F I V E F O U R club.com. Promo code congrats. 54club.com. Promo code congrats. I'm hooking you up. I'm hooking you up. You know, I really am. You know, I know some I know some people are like, oh, commercials, but I'm hooking you up. I'm telling you what to do with your life so you don't have to spend all the time to do it. You understand? It's easy. And also, if you're going to be part of my cult, come on, guys, get with it. There's rules here. All right? You want to look cool? You want to be cool? All right. You got to do what you got to do. What you gotta do. So, that's what's up. Um... Did you guys watch the Indy 500, by the way? Uh, I think it was recently because I saw some shit on it. And uh, there's not something I get less than that. Indy 500. 400 million people show up at a racetrack and sit and watch cars drive around a loop. And you can't see the goddamn cars because you're too far away. And you cheer. And it's hours and hours, and nothing changes. They just kind of over and go over and over. A guy could be in the lead the whole time, and then you're just watching. Uh, now, I get that it isn't geared towards me. I'm a Cali guy, and um, I was born in New Jersey. And uh, definitely, definitely a Southern thing, I feel like, the Indy 500. Does Indy 500 mean that they go around the track 500 times? Indy 500. Yeah, I think it does, right? Uh, I'm going to look it up. <sighs> uh, it, it, they go 500 times. They go, the average speed is 166 miles per hour. It's lethal. Um, 
It's just insane. Practice. Let's look at some of this too. Practice. Marco Andretti won, I guess, 2016. I wonder if there's like a talent that you have to have or if it's just you you try, you keep practicing. I mean, you got to have some kind of count, t- talent, I guess. 500 times. Hey, doing anything 500 times? It's too much. In a row, you do something 500 times in a row, you're crazy. You do something 500 times in a row, you're the guy who does the chicken dance. That would be the best Indy 500. I would watch it if he was driving a car with his dog in the passenger seat, smelling like shit, just driving by. Chicken dance every time he goes by. I don't understand the Indy 500. I don't understand the appeal. I don't understand the appeal. Now, that's coming from a guy who doesn't understand the... Look, I don't like watching basketball or football or baseball, but I understand the appeal. But I don't understand the appeal of going to the Indy 500. I, I, unless it's like, everyone's going, let's go. But if it's like, no, we got to go because we want to see the Tide car. Uh, what? No. That's weird. To me, I mean, I don't know. I'm sure I'm pissing off a plethora of Southerns, but don't care. But that's coming from, you know, I, I know I said, I don't, I know people sometimes in the po- from the podcast say like, you don't like a lot of things, man. It's not that I don't like a lot of things. It's that I just think it's funny. And like, that's what I talk about because I'm mm, comedian. But also, I, 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 like a, I like some things too. And I, I talk about them too, like those unreal pants, dude. Really? You don't want to hear, you don't want to fucking tune into the podcast to just have somebody being really passionate about shit they like. Eh, Real bad. Would be real bad. Right? I don't know. I I, I mean, I don't know. I'm just doing this by the fucking seat of my, I'm flying by the seat of my pants, dude. This is episode 20 and I'm still figuring it out. But you guys fucking, you guys keeping me going. Last last podcast, we had the most um, downloads we got, so... Moving on up, and I didn't even think I thought last episode was maybe one of the ones that lacked. So good. So 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 new people heard that and then thought, oh fuck this guy. Um, no, but it's good. Um, whatever. I don't know. I mean, I know there's a difference between. I, I just feel like if you like everything, you're kind of, you know, that guy that's like, oh yeah, I wanna, <laughs> I wanna, I wanna experience everything. That life has to offer, that this world has to offer, you know, like that guy or a girl is just like, and then they just are fascinated with everything that, that, that person is like a piece of shit, you know, because like, well, then who are you? If you don't like some things, I, I trust somebody that doesn't like a lot of shit way more than somebody who likes too many things. I got a buddy that travels everywhere, dude. He's in Hawaii right now. And he sent me a video of him snorkeling and shit. Fish beating him in the fucking face. Tortoise saw a tortoise or a turtle, whatever. And he's like, isn't it amazing? I'm like, yeah, but it's kind of amazing for me to watch the video also. Right? Like we got fucking, I got to watch this tortoise. I get to watch it not only in real life, I get to watch it on a little handheld device in my fucking hand at the coffee bean. Ah, what? That's also actually more amazing. Oh, yeah, but you got to get out there and experience it. Like, you remember that scene in, in Good Will Hunting when he was like, sure, you know a lot about the Sistine Chapel, but you've never been there. You don't know the way it is and yada, yada. You've read all about it, but you don't. When Robin Williams is talking to Matt Damon, when I was watching that movie, I was like, ah, it's the same fucking thing. It's the same fucking thing. If all we have is words to fucking describe the shit, to tell people about it, then that's what the fuck's happening to us when we're not there. People are describing it, it to us, so we just fucking use those same words. Not everybody can experience it, so... Ah... Uh, you know, I just like anybody who likes everything or if everybody likes something, the thing is not good. I feel like you got to be polarizing a little bit. And also you can't like everything. You like everything. You faker, you liar. 
There's a lot of actors that go on. They're just like, oh, the movie was amazing, and I had such an amazing time, and how, how amazing is Elijah Wood, and how amazing is Jennifer Garner, and it was just amazing, and everything was just so amazing. No, you didn't get along with some of those people, and also, the movie might suck. I would hate to have to do press on a movie that I hated, though. I don't think I've ever done that. It would be very hard for me to lie, but I guess I would because it has to help other people you gotta, you can't, you don't want to fucking bury other people in their work, you know. You gotta find a, a, a balance, though. Just look at me, and if I'm doing a junket on a movie I did that I don't like, just look at me. If I'm winking, you know what's up. Yeah, I had a great time. Goink, wink. Yeah, no, no, it was great working with the director. Goink. It was a very cohesive set. Goink. And uh, the script really, really, uh, I thought it was great, but then when we started shooting it, I realized, wow, this is actually amazing. That's wink. That's the wink. But knowing if I'm goinking, it's a piece of shit. Oh, dude, 10-minute podcast fans, when I used to do that podcast, you're going to like this next fucking promo. What do you do when you want to snack? But all you can find is junk food. Rely on your self-control to resist the temptation. <laughs> Please, you eat the junk food. So start snacking healthy with Nature Box. That's Nature Box. Nature Box makes snacks that actually taste great and are better for you. Created with high quality ingredients that are free from artificial colors, flavors, or sweeteners. So you can feel great about snacking. Dude, I, they sent me a bunch of stuff. Ate them all in one day. So good. I... I, I I just love snacks, and I, th I feel like if you're like me, you like snacks, okay? And also, if you're a person, you like snacks because – but you keep around the junk food. You do that because it's easy, but they'll send this to you. My my my, I, I got uh, the, the whole wheat strawberry figgy bars. Forget it. The peanut butter nom noms, forget it. Put them all in my face. I'll swallow them. Become part of me. Nature Box, they made their service better. You can order as much as you want, as often as you want, with no minimum purchase required, and you can cancel anytime. So go to naturebox.com and check out their snack catalog. There are over 100 snacks to choose from, and they're constantly adding delicious new snacks. They're so good. Choose the snacks you want. They'll deliver them right to your door. With Nature Box, you'll never get bored. Okay? If you don't like and, – and here's the other thing, too. It's, uh, there are – are, there are new snacks each month inspired by real customer feedback. And if you ever try a snack you don't like, NatureBox will replace it for free. Okay? Right now, you'll save even more. NatureBox is offering our fans 50% off your first order when you go to naturebox.com slash congrats. That's naturebox.com slash congrats or 50, for 50% 50 your off your first order. Naturebox.com slash congrats. Mm, NatureBox. Square Cash. Square Cash is the best way to pay people back. So do it. Do it. Tupac would have done it. If Tupac was alive today, he would have used Square Cash. You like Tupac? You stand for beliefs? Then get Square Cash. Sending and re receiving money is totally easy. You download the Square Cash app and you link, you link to your debit or your credit card, select an amount to send, and you type in a friend's phone number or email address to complete a payment, and they get a notification that they just received the money. That's it. No gimmicks. Square Cash is better than the other guys. This isn't a social network. You know, they, they don't post people like, oh, you, you sent $25 to fucking Rick X. Nobody knows. It's secret. It's on the download. It's on the download. <laughs> if you need to pay, if you need to pay a hooker, use Square Cash. Download the free Square Cash app for iOS or Android now. Now, will they get mad at me for saying you can pay hookers with Square Cash? Probably. But I don't care because I have to keep it real with you babies. Um, that's what you'll get. You'll get 100% keeping it real when you're here with here, when you're here with me listening to congratulations. You won't get other, maybe if I got to do a junket for a movie, you might be getting the not to keeping it real. But here, you'll be getting the keeping it real deluxe home edition Chris D'Elia set. That's what you'll be getting, okay? It's just how it is. I'm in a lonely room right now. That's me keeping it real. I'm in my podcast room. I got some fucking uh, sound uh, what do you call it? Um, those little waffle sound acceptors. The fuck you keep talking about them? What do you fuck you call them? I got a bunch of frames 
with some pi- pictures in frames. They're not hung up. They're just on the floor. So sad. I have a TV not hung up. An orange. I have two orange chairs. My producer is not here because he said he couldn't come. One fire him. But, you know, pay him. I pay him a percentage. Didn't show up. Not professional. One fire him. But won't. Right? The paint's coming off of the wall because I try I put tape on it and then it fucking came down. Looks like a piece of shit. You know, I got a puppet of me in here that I had on Undateable. Wasn't supposed to take it home. Stole it legitimately. What the fuck are they gonna use it for though, you know? Prop guys are cool when you're on a TV set. They'll be like, Hey, here you go. I heard you like vodka. And you're like, oh cool. You're like, here you go. And you're like, Oh, don't you need this for the show? And they're like, Nobody needs to know. Every prop guy is like a fucking somebody Tony Soprano would hire. Hey, you like that? You like this? Yeah, you like this watch? Take it. Nobody needs to know. Take the watch. We get two of them. And then you're like blinged out because of the prop guy. You feel me? Um. But yeah, so it's funny the stuff that you get when you're an actor or a comedian, like the stuff that people send you. And this stuff, like, I got literally no clue. Absolutely no fucking clue. Laugh Factory hits me up in the email. Hey, you got a package delivered for you, to you, here. When can you come by and get it? So I was like, I'll get it when I do my show there and whatever it was, one Friday. I get there. There's a big box for me. And I said, what the fuck is it? And the owner, Jamie Masada, was like, well, be careful opening it. What if fucking some anthrax pops out, you know? Or, like, there's a bomb. And I'm like, fucking good. I actually, honestly, good. So I got my opener to open it. And um, I, I stood well far, far away because I if he's going to I want him to die of anthrax, not me. I'd much rather him die of anthrax than me. And so he opened it up and I, I crept forward like easy, easing on up just in case there were fucking, you know, rats with the Ebola virus or whatever the fuck. And I looked and there are about 20 coffee mugs, cups, like 20 coffee cups with fucking Boeing with a picture of a Boeing aircraft on it flying through the sky. Why? What on earth did I ever do to make somebody send me 20 coffee mugs with Boeing aircrafts flying through the air on them? What the fuck? Who sent me that shit? I literally have no clue who sent me that shit. But now, they're mine. They're in the back of my car. I haven't used them yet. Because I have coffee cups. But who sent me that shit? As an actor, as a comedian, when you have a fan base, you get sent the weirdest fucking shit. Got sent a dead cat once. No, I'm kidding. That never happened. But that would be fucking amazing. Please don't ever send me a dead cat, anyone. But yeah, if you do want to send me stuff, send it to the comedy store or the Laugh Factory. They'll. But don't send me tw- don't send me twenty coffee cups with Boeing aircrafts flying through the sky. E- very weird. Maybe because they know I like coffee or something, but I didn't know who it was from. There was no note or anything. Maybe they fucked it up. Maybe they fucked it up. My agents, by the way, because they knew I was sick. So I'm taking a shower today. Ding dong, ding dong. My doorbell's ringing. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. My doorbell's ringing. I say, I look out. I I use the intercom. I have a little intercom. I was like, who is it? They're like, Grubhub. It's a fucking food service thing that I don't use. So I was like, yeah. And they're like, yeah, you placed an order. I was like, nah, I don't have any food coming. And they're like, oh, leave. Ding dong, ding dong later. And I'm like, this motherfucker, I don't even check answer this time. Because who the fuck's ringing the doorbell? Who rings the doorbell, honestly? Only somebody you don't want to talk to. The only people that the only people that show up at your house that you actually want to be there, they'll text you that you're there. Doorbells are fucking obsolete. Um, and also, you want the people that don't use the doorbells to use the doorbells. You don't want them to text you. You want them to use the doorbells. You want them to be like, ding dong, I'm here. And the, but they're, they're like, I text you four times. You're like, well, fucking ring the doorbell, asshole. The only people that ring the doorbell are people that know they shouldn't be there, that feel a little uncomfortable because they're like, well, it's very formal. I got to ring the doorbell. So this fucking guy is there, ding dong, ding dong, again. And I'm like, it can't be the same guy. So I look, I, I go on my balcony and I look over and I say, hey, man, what's up? And he says, hey, Grubhub's here for you. And I said, I'm telling you, man, I didn't order Grubhub. And he says, you, are you Chris? And I'm like, huh? Yeah. So I go down to check the address. The address is right. And it says chicken soup. And I'm like, oh, I actually kind of want chicken soup because <laughs> I'm sick. So that's cool. So I take it, I bring it up, and I open it up. And I'm like, I don't know who the fuck's in Did they poison it? Like, I don't know who the fuck. So I open it up. Not only is it not chicken soup, 
It's a bagel with cream cheese and salmon in it. Gross. Gag me. Gargle my nuts. Gross as shit. And a fucking, like, beef sandwich. Gross. Why would I eat a beef sandwich and a bagel with salmon and cream cheese in it? And I was like, who the fuck sent me this? I don't know who's sending me all this shit. First of all, nobody knows where I live. It's a, I just moved, you know? And, like, nobody knows my address. Nobody's been over. I don't give my address out. So I fucking call the... Uh, no, no, no. So I, finally I check my email later, and my agent sends me an email. Hey, man, my agent's assistant. Heard you were sick. I know you were sick because I canceled the fucking appointment. So we sent you some chicken soup. And I was like, oh, I don't want to tell him. I don't have the heart to tell him that the fucking order was wrong. It's like, oh, you guys are awesome. Thanks so much. But how annoying is all that shit? I'm sick. I don't want to fucking go downstairs and open the doorbell. All I want to do is lay in my bed. This guy, ding dong, ding dong, keeps on thinking. I didn't order some shit. Gives me some chicken soup. I'm like, oh, cool. You know what? I would actually eat this shit. And it's a fucking beef sandwich. It wasn't even like, it was the most regular beef ever. You know how like sometimes it's like ham or like, you know, uh, uh, um, um, like what else is, is like roast beef or like some shit where you're like, okay, yeah, nice. This was like the most regular ass My Little Kitchen beef that you'd see like where like kids would be like playing house in like a little stove and be like, here's your beef. And they'd put it on like a blue plate. And you'd be like, yum to the kid. And you'd think beef doesn't even look like this. And it was stacked. It was stacked. The sandwich was stacked. So gross. And cream cheese with fish in it. Bye. On a bagel, bye. And fries. What kind of fucking asshole is eating this shit? You know who ate this shit? The guy who died in seven from gluttony. That's who's eating it. The fat guy face down in a bowl of porridge, naked, when Brad Pitt fucking dis- discovers him with Morgan Freeman. Hey, am I Chris D'Elia? Or am I the fat guy who's naked with the face down in a cup of porridge while Brad Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman discuss, discovers him in the first act in seven. Which one am I? Me. Not that guy. So don't send me a beef sandwich stacked to the gills with fucking an everything bagel with salmon and cream cheese in it and fries. Fat steak fries too. You know? So not my friend. They fucking said... Sent you some chicken soup, and then they just wanted me to fucking eat that bullshit. Nah. Also, who uses Grubhub? I feel like Postmates is the thing. That's probably why they fucked it up. How about when they send you your order, and it's completely fucked up, and there's nothing you can do about it? Just completely wrong. One time I ordered like a, full, like a sandwich and a milkshake or some shit, and they sent me a fucking side salad. It was just salad. No, not salad. It was green leaves with carrots on it. That's it. And you know what, man? I fucking ate that shit. So angrily, too. I was so hungry. Who am I, fucking John Basedow? Gross. You ever see the John Basedow? You guys know who John Basedow is? The guy who does the abs? He's always standing, like, twisted with his arm on his hip. It's so funny. Ugh. Uh, I don't know, you know. I think I'm about to wrap this up. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to look at the fucking hashtags here. Thanks for listening, you guys. This was a rough one because I was sick, honestly. And I was just... Um, um, You know what, dude? Somebody's asking me here. At Tosh Dominique. Dominique? What the fuck? D-O-M-I-N-E-N-Q-U-E. Dominique? Ah, change it. Have less letters in there. I feel like... Anyway. Uh, she looks like a nice girl. Nice lady. But definitely expected you to post a pic of the Amber Rose Challenge. What were your thoughts on that? Here's a, I don't know what that is. Here are my thoughts on it. Enough with the fucking challenges. They're not challenges anymore. They're just fucking... You know? Like what? I'm My special's coming out. Man on fire. What am I supposed to do? Hey guys. Light yourself on fire. The man on fire challenge. Nah. Gross. What is the Amber Rose challenge? 
Are they trying to? Uh, oh, I guess it's, is it naked chicks or something? Oh, it's like people being naked on, I mean, you know, so like, I love how she's like, it's so funny too. Like she's like trying to get people to like celebrate their bodies and shit and like be amazing and like showing their tits and pussies and stuff. And it's like, yeah, that works for Amber Rose. She literally got famous for dating Kanye West. That's who does that. But if you're a fucking girl that has like a a fucking that works at like Rolex and all of a sudden you post on Twitter, you naked pussy and tits, you're getting fired. Hey, hey, how about the fired challenge? Hey, Amber Rose, good on you. Way to inspire females to go out there and post naked pictures of their pussies and tits. They're going to get fired. You're not. Because you're famous for dating rappers. I'm not saying... I Look, I know nothing about um, Amber Rose. I'm, maybe she's great. So I am talking out of my fucking ass. But don't post a picture of your bits and pieces on Instagram. You're going to get fired. You got stuff to lose. Um, so if that's what that is. But enough with the challenges. People are just challenging everything. Hey, man. Um, um, hey, it's the breathing challenge. How much breath can you take before you pass out? People just passing out on the fucking sidewalk, just opening their skulls. Oh, he failed. He died. This is for ALS. (laughs) Um, number one celebrity crush, female and male, Meredith Erickson. At mayor underscore bear 05. Change it. Naturally, you knew I'd say it. Uh, Celebrity crush female is Kate Beckinsale. No, it's Gal Gadot. For sure. If you're you're a guy and you're heterosexual and you don't... Even if you're gay and you don't want to be in a room with Gal Gadot, uh, you're you're in an alien suit. You're in a human suit as an alien. That girl's amazing. Um, Male. Man, I got a lot of dude crushes. You know what bothers me too is when people post um, MCM, man crush, whatever, and it's a girl. You're Guys are supposed to do man crush mo- Mondays. It, that's for guys to do. If you're a girl, you don't have a man crush. You just have a crush. You're being redundant. Uh, my guy crushes, I got a few, man. Liam Neeson for sure. Um, oh, you know who for sure is the Chris Hemsworth? 100%. He could get it. Um, I like those guys. Um, I like those guys. Uh, let's see, another one of these uh, gaming the systems. People send me sometimes pictures of people. Check this out. Look at this asshole. And they're just dressed regular. I don't understand. Uh, do you ever use pickup lines or have you had them used on you? At AFC Lover. No, I never have. And never have ha- I don't know. Not really li- lines. No, I don't think anybody really does that. I was watching a movie the other day. What was it? Oh, it was Species. And the guy on it said, I was just wondering. He walked uh, over to two ladies and he was like, I was just wondering how two beautiful ladies are standing here with no dates. And it's like, imagine if you said that in real life. What a fucking bag of shit you would be. Imagine saying that. Going to up to two ladies. You know what? There you go. That's the Chris D'Elia challenge. Walk up to one or two ladies that are alone and say, I was just over there wondering how a lady like you, or how you two beautiful ladies, were standing here with no date. Date, you know? That's what he said. 
And then, of course, it didn't work out in the movie, which it wouldn't work out in real life, too. I wonder, I would, I would love to try that. If I walked up to a girl, hey, excuse me, I was just wondering uh, what a beautiful lady like you is doing without a, without a, without a date. <laughs> I mean, that would be, I would feel so bitch saying that. I would feel so insecure saying that. I don't even really feel insecure usually because I've fucking bombed a lot. Um, this guy says at star Zavi, how about white people just stop saying the N word at all? And there won't, and there will be no outrage joke or not. He doesn't get a pass. I guess they're talking about, um, uh, uh, Bill Maher. Yeah. I mean, the guy has a good point. I mean, I, I don't say it even in jokes, but you know, it is on the other hand, you know, that's. Bill Maher was making a joke. He is a comedian. I don't know. There's two points to it. I understand. There's more than two points, but um, let's see. Uh, oh, this is a good one. Reese Randall at R at R Randall ten. Thoughts on people who clap when a plane lands? It's annoying. Yeah, that is stupid. The guy just did his job. I don't clap at anything though, unless it's like a real live performance that fucking is amazing or like a comedian that made me laugh. But but like. Because that adds to the live performance. But when you're on a plane and you land, you're not in a live performance. You're in a fucking Airbus. And they did their job. So don't clap. But you know that. It's like clapping in movies. Hey, Jim Carrey isn't really here. Okay? So stop clapping at the mask. Um, and I loved the mask. <clears throat> All right, one more and then I'm out of here. I mean, what's the most embarrassing thing to ever happen to you, this person, Lexi Serna? I don't even know how to answer that. One time I shit my pants as a, at a sleepover when I was, uh, I got, it must have been 10. I was too scared to go to the bathroom because fucking Freddy Krueger was on TV. And my buddy already fell asleep and I was like, I'll just go to, I'll just, I'll just go to sleep and not go to the bathroom. I'll wake up, go to the bathroom when it's light out. And then I woke up and I fucking had shit in my pants. Uh, I was nine. So I don't know, man. Why did, I mean, why am I even telling you guys this? Freddy Krueger was scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. Uh, all right. Well, that's it. There you go. There you have it. Um, <clears throat> uh, all right. So that's it. Yeah. I'm sorry guys, but, uh, I'm done. Wow. We went over an hour. That was a good one. That was a struggle. Cause I was sick. I wasn't feeling good. And so, you know what you guys, you guys stuck with me through this one. And I really appreciate that. If you're still listening now, you baby, you're a true baby. Don't tell the others square cash. Uh, don't forget square cash. Are you using that yet? Download the free Square Cash app for iOS or Android. Do it now. My upcoming dates, you heard about them in the beginning. Baltimore, West Palm Beach, Huntington, New York, uh, uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. West. I said West Palm Beach. Um, and um, uh, Austin, Texas, Nashville, Tennessee, Salt Lake City, Phoenix, Tempe, Irvine, California, Spokane. Uh, so go get tickets at crystalia.com on that. And um, tweet me at hashtag congratulations pod. And don't forget to put this in your queue. My Netflix special. My Netflix special coming out, Man on Fire, June 27th. Rate and review this show, congratulations, on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. That would help me out. I would really appreciate that. I'm trying to game the system and trying to back up the motherfucking Brinks truck. You want to help me out? Thanks. See you, babies. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs>